Welcome back. We managed to uh, take out this guy. Not much going on there, eh? Which is a good thing. And he had that uh, key card on him, which I guess we'll need. Smooth move. You've got his key ring. Oh, that's not what I meant. It's that Lord Master's key ring. Indeed it is. Um, let's take a look at the desk, actually. There seems to be a small pile of CD-ROM sitting here. Interesting. There seems to... Let's see what we've got there. Your search through the CDs reveals a bunch of typically boring multimedia magazines. A multimedia phone book. Too bad there aren't any phones around here. Too bad. The Outpost Project Survival Guide. Is that a reference to Sierra's game Outpost? Successful People Managing Techniques by Carm Trebus. Funny, it's empty. I guess he wasn't so successful. MF DOS for idiots, morons, and feebs. Touring Xenon on five buckazoids a day. By the way, you do actually need to do this. This is not just to get funny messages. It isn't like uh, some of these things. Discovering your inner maggot. Right. How to become assigned to being a corporate creative genius without really trying. Hmm, this might be worth checking out. It's a copy of popular Tektronics. See, we actually took one. You should have paid attention the first time. This game's budget is way too small to allow me to list all those titles over again. Wait, why would that have cost money? Um, there's actually also something on the on top of the humidifier, which I didn't look at before. It's a burlesque modi. A modi. Now, if you remember, um, in uh, implants and stuff, we found out that a modi is apparently something that allows you to alter somebody's behavior. You now possess the modi. And it seems that it would plug into uh, these ports on the back of their uh, of the, their necks. It's a burlesque modi. Indeed, it is. It's a bur. So, um, we also have the uh, CD-ROM, which strangely has holes in it. It's a somewhat damaged CD-ROM disc. Somebody try to eat it or what? I guess we could use that computer thingy, the 3DOA, to uh, uh, read that. From data quarter to homing beacon. That sounds useful. If only we still had our data quarter. What the hell is that on the wall, by the way? Way too disgusting. That is true. This optical disc-based multimedia entertainment system, it's called... We already got that description before. We'll see uh, if we can read that, if we can get our uh, data quarter back, and we can make a homing beacon so people can find us and, and come and rescue us and stuff. Make a time machine out of DeLorean. That also sounds very interesting. Let's see. From data quarter to homing beacon, fast. Yes, you too can make a homing beacon from simple household goods. Chief among the devices you can use is the data quarter, which, with a few adjustments, sends out a powerful signal to potential rescuers who could be light years away. First, open your data quarter. In uh, open your data quarter. Inside, you'll find chips, IRK settings, and plates. If you correctly alter these settings, you'll soon be home by the fire with a cup of nog. Of course, any mistakes could result in a barbecue with you as the entree. But let's not worry about that. We'll describe the details in the next issue. Hmm. Well, that's annoying. Can we print this? It does nothing. Can we read any of the other things? Email shopping with no buckazoids. 
eShop with absolutely nothing in the accounts. It's easy, when you know the system. First, random gen approximately 32 4x4 numbers and pick a month in the year. These will be your challenge change charge cards. Make up a name, not Nickperm, please, and start calling e-catalog stores. The idea is to make the calls fast and give them a challenge card numbers before they can trace the call. As most hackoids know, there are so many cards out there, the probability of one of your challenge cards being a used number is practically 100%. Remember, don't skimp. You're spending other people's buckazoids, so go for it. It's always nice when they print stuff on how to uh, be a criminal. Mired Emac, hot journalism or hot air? We've all heard the, heard the hype. Mired Emac is the hottest, hippest, hip hopiest thing to happen to journalism since Gutenberg invented that big printer thingy. Also known as a printing press. But this is. But is it the Emac of the future, or is it just another Cyber Vogue knockoff with some fancy schmancy art? You be the judge. The last issue features an article on smart drug stores on Celine Dion. A list of the latest techno gibberish and a review of Waterworld. Are these subjects cool or do they leave you cold? Definitely the latter. It's just about as far from cool as you could possibly get. Make a time machine out of the DeLorean. I want to be able to do that. Chances are that you're too young to remember a quaint little movie about a fellow named Marty McFly. But he and his friend Doc started a trend that has become a popular pursuit among time-traveling hobbyists, making time machines out of DeLorean cars. DeLoreans aren't easy to find these days. They went out of fashion when John DeLorean went in the slammer. But if you have the, l the luck to come across one of these babies, the universe and all its time zones, and we mean all its time zones, can be yours. Happy hunting! Well, I guess it's a better looking design for a time machine than that... Uh, uh, overgrown silver tennis shoe thing that we had in Space Force 4. This is such a useful magazine. Again, it doesn't actually tell you how to do it, just that you can. Great Scott. In search of the elusive multiple organism. I see what, what you did there. Since the dawn of time, men and women have searched for the multiple organism. Some say that it is just a myth. Others claim that it existed at one time, but that the effects of toxic waste, pollution and electromagnetic forces throughout the universe have made the multiple organism extinct. This writer for one has searched all her adult life for the excitement of contact with one of these elusive creatures. The thought of seeing a multiple organism sends a thrill through me. I hope with my entire essence that multiple organisms do exist on some level, and that one day I may meet up with one of them just to say hi. Man, the subtext in here is thick. Um, I think that's all, yes. We don't actually need to print anything, nor can you actually print anything. So, um, let's just turn this thing off. I think we need to eject to do that. No. It does nothing until you... The room's... Either that or someone downstairs is using a pro shiatsu. Wait. I missed the first part. The room seems to be vibrating very slightly. This would probably indicate a damping field in operation somewhere close by. Either that or someone downstairs is using a pro shiatsu. Right. Um. Anything else useful on the table? Surprisingly, it's a pile of books. Who'd have thought these guys could read? Not me. This is the data quarter you got from that endodroid hunter dude. Uh huh. That is a good thing. Because we just read that it is possible to turn a data quarter into a homing beacon. So let's uh, take a look at it.
This is the data quarter you got from that endodroid hunter dude. Yes, we already knew that. Now, normally it is apparently a scanner, but much like Star Trek's tricorder, they can be reconfigured to do anything. I'm just opening them up and switching some chips around. If you screw up, you can just click this button, it will reset it to its original state. Although I don't really see why you'd need to do that. So let's see. Well, like the uh, article said, we have a bunch of uh, plates. Which are these things. On each plate is a chip. And each of the plates uh, is mounted in a sensor array. These are the A through E thingies. It's a circuit board, and a darn good one. And they also each have an IRK setting. Captain, there be switches here. These are IRK switches. Only one switch for each sensor array may be on at any time. And only one IRK switch of each number 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 may be on at any time. It hurts your eyes to look at that. In fact, you feel a major headache coming on. I guess Roger is not the electronics type. This is the Tachyon transmitter plate, hence the awesome TT moniker. Good to know. This is the Dentium chip. Dentium? Clever. This is the particle shield plate, hence the helpful PS appellation. This is the Repentium chip. Are they all going to be like that? This is the subspace emitter plate, hence the handy SE abbreviation. This is the fermentium chip. This is the recalibrating fluctuator plate, hence the always lovely RF tag. How many ways can they find to uh, describe an abbreviation? This is the Dimtel chip. This is the feedback cutter offer plate, hence the clever FC label. This is the Spentium chip. What's this? A crystal of some sort? This is the data quarter power source. A tiny chip of Devalium crystal. The official power source of Starcon. Good to know. You can actually remove all of these. And then um, we have to figure out how to uh, reconfigure this so that it becomes a homing beacon. But unfortunately, the information for that was not in that uh, popular Tektronics magazine, so where can we find it? Well, I know where we can, in the next video!